Does 432 hertz really calm our nervous system or is it just good marketing? In this video we'll explore the solfeggio tones, the science and what's left unproven. My name is Leonardo, I'm a PhD student exploring the intersection between neuroscience, music therapy and sleep. So in this video we'll start by understanding what are solfeggio tones, then we'll look into 432 hertz specifically in its association with the Earth's magnetic field, and we'll finish with science about sound therapy. Subscribe and like if you haven't yet, I count on you. You often see cymatics, which are sound and liquids showing patterns due to sound vibrations, used as proof for certain frequencies being healing. Here we compare 432 hertz cymatic pattern to a 440 hertz. And this is beautiful physics, but to really understand healing frequencies, we have to study the psychology and biology of those frequencies, not just physics detached from biology. There is some interesting research combining cymatics with cellular activity like sonocytology, but it's an emerging field. So what are the solfeggio tones? It's mainly described as 396 hertz, 417 hertz, 520 hertz, 639. You might have seen these on YouTube. It's linked to different chakras, like the lower ones are linked to the root chakra all the way to the crown chakra. And it has claims of repairing your DNA, which so far, spoiler, is not proven. Really, the history comes down to this. Solfeggio was a method for learning the tones on a piano, on a scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. It was developed in the 11th century during Gregorian chants by Guido di Arezzo. He went all the way to uh, La. He actually paired some lyrics in Latin and the initial lyric was the name of the note. So it's the hymn to Saint John the Baptist. It goes something like this. So it was ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la. So it was invented by Guido di Arezzo, the composer of this song I kind of sung. And do was called ut and it was changed in the 1600s in Italy to do. Later there was the addition of the seventh note, C, or B, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. It was there, 1900s. And Sarah Glover in Britain called it T. So Solfege is a system to learn music, a mnemonic system. Hertz to designate frequencies comes from the scientist named Heinrich Hertz. Frequencies before the conventional naming of frequencies as Hertz was called cycles per second and it was named after Hertz in 1930. So the association with specific Hertz and healing aspects is a very recent aspect. Well, actually in the 1990s, Joseph Puleo and Leonard Horowitz used numerology, a sort of astrology with numbers that I'm not too familiar with, developed the patterns of the solfeggio tones by creating steps of 111 hertz. So 111, 222, 333, etc. I know, that's not it. Built on a 111 hertz step pattern. 111 hertz step pattern and it has a digital root trick where you add each of the numbers let's say 528 hertz and it gives you either three six or nine so in this case it gives you i don't even know so as mentioned there's no actual medieval source between solfeggio tones the actual frequencies and any healing properties. Solfeggio are about syllables, the numbers are much more modern and not based on any scientific proof, only it's a theoretical idea based on numerology principles. But to be real, sound does affect us through tempo, harmony, timbre, memory, expectations. It's not just one isolated note. So what about 432 hertz? Well, most instruments today, the standard tuning is to 440 hertz. What does it mean? That La or A is tuned to 440 hertz. But historically, there have been loads of anecdotes saying that 432 hertz. So that's 32 cents lower than 440 hertz. 
feels warmer, feels hotter, and it's in resonance with the Earth's electromagnetic field. Let's briefly dive a bit into the history. So in 1884, Giuseppe Verdi, a composer, requested orchestras to tune at 432 hertz, which was accepted. At the time and before that, orchestras would tune at different frequencies because there was no standard to which musicians should tune their instruments to. Now in 1988, Italian opera singers actually protested so that 432 hertz were considered the convention. But a year later, Italy went with the European convention of tuning A to 440 hertz. Maria Reynolds, an American musician from the 20th century, claimed that listeners at 440 hertz concerts behaved more aggressive and polemical, while the same music performed at 432 hertz was described as more attentive, more pleasant. This was based on interviews with over 2,000 people. Finally, the Schiller Institute, a German think tank founded at the end of the 20th century, promoted 432 hertz as scientifically correct tuning for instruments, citing Fibonacci, Kepler, and Da Vinci. Let's have a look at the maths. If we tune La, A4, to 432 hertz, our Do, or C4, is equal to 256. And using the simple maths relationship that when you divide by two, a certain frequency, so this is frequency x, you obtain the lower minus one octave. It's the lower octave. And so you do this, in this case, to go five octaves down and you reach eight hertz, which is the fundamental frequency at which the electromagnetic field of the earth is vibrating at. We'll explain the Schumann resonance, as it's called, of the earth later. So there has been a scientific study that looked into the differences between 432 hertz and 440 hertz. They asked 33 participants to listen to famous film scores. So that's the main theme from Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Schindler's List, Life is Beautiful and Gladiator. To see if tuning by 32 cents or a hundredth of a tone down to get 432 hertz had any effects on the psychology and physiology of the participants. And fascinatingly, there has been a statistical significance in the heart rate. The 432 hertz allowed a slower heart rate, five beats per minute slower, and participants said they had a higher focus and satisfaction with that music. Now here come my critiques. At least it's the first study, but they used very famous music and didn't check if the participants knew the music. And familiarity is one of the most important mechanisms for musical pleasure. If you know the music, you're more likely to like it. This is a scientific fact. For me, this evidence goes more towards a novel familiarity effect, where a famous melody felt slightly different and therefore was more pleasant. You can check out the paper, but this is a first study, it's a pilot study, so it opens questions for the future. But why is 432 hertz so important? Well, first it wasn't in the solfeggio original tones, that we looked at with the numerology principles, but it's still counted within the solfeggio tones as a healing frequency. There is some history associated with it, but there was no standard in conventional tunings for orchestra. I mean, even today, even though the convention is 440 hertz, and uh, this book by Artur Jaske, which I had the honor to meet and chat with, he mentions that today there are orchestras that tune at 442 hertz, 443, 444, and even 430 hertz. So far, there isn't anything particular about 432 hertz. But here's the argument. It is mathematically related to the Schumann resonance. What is this? We looked at the maths earlier. So what's happening? The Earth's atmosphere, or the iconosphere specifically, has constantly about 2,000 thunderstorms going on, with about 50 flashes of lightning per second. And this induces an electromagnetic field activity around the Earth. And there are standing waves that emerge. There's a higher amplitude in certain frequencies because of the Earth's form. And here are some extremely low frequencies that are important. Well, it's not 8 Hertz, it's actually 7.83 Hertz. Then there are some harmonics, some multiples, so 14.3, 20.8, 27.3, 33.8 Hertz. And so it's been theorized that 
Because this is sort of ancient frequencies based in the atmosphere, it is likely that biological rhythms are resonating with these resonant cavities, these important frequencies, as they're called, resonant cavities. And there are some evidence actually showing that these extremely low frequencies in the electromagnetic field have benefits for cellular activity. But there's also similarities with brain waves, EEG. So here you can compare the two graphs of EEG rhythms that are important, so theta, alpha, and beta waves, which are in line with these extremely low frequencies in the Earth's iconosphere, the Schumann resonances. In cellular activity, bioelectricity has been shown to be a very important way for the cell to progress its activity. And studies have shown that the extremely low frequencies of the Schumann resonances modulate the mitochondria to change reactive oxygen species, which is detrimental to the cell and the mitochondria. I can alter calcium activity in the mitochondria membranes and at the level of the cellular membrane for electric activity. And it changes gene expression. So Schumann resonances between 7 and 34 hertz are in the electromagnetic activity, but 432 hertz is in the audible activity. Yes, both the frequencies and one is two orders of magnitude higher, but this is dependent on the concept of neural entrainment, brain synchronization to rhythms, which we will go into a bit later. But so far, there's no clinical evidence for 432 hertz actually harnessing the Schumann resonances. And we'll finish with science about sound therapy. Relating to sound therapy, there have been several studies looking at the effects of Tibetan bowls, which are also called singing bowls. There's one study that looked at 62 people during a singing bowl meditation, and it significantly reduced tension, anger, fatigue, depression. A very significant observational study. Also increased spiritual well-being. This is well-being, okay? <laughs> it seems that these effects were more pronounced for newcomers compared to more experienced meditators. Based on a systematic review by Lin et al. in 25, 14 studies on Tibetan singing bowls interventions concluded that most studies reported lower anxiety and depression, improved mood and quality of life, lowered heart rate, and even increased heart rate variability, which is a marker of longevity and health. There were also increases in theta and delta brainwaves, which are associated with deeper relaxation. However, these studies lack a rigorous control group, which make these results not as strong. However, it shows a promising influence of Tibetan bowls and sound baths. A type of frequency that has been shown to be beneficial are called binaural beats. And we have one frequency that goes into one ear, let's say the left ear, and another frequency that goes into the other ear. And the difference between both frequencies entrains your brain to that one. So here would be six hertz. Actually, you're listening to that example right now. If you have headphones on, it will work. So this has been shown to have positive effects on insomnia, on anxiety, reducing tension, depression, improving mood, and it's quite effective for sleeping. For instance, to go to sleep, we want our brain to enter theta or delta waves. So delta brain waves are one to four hertz and theta are from, let's say, four to eight hertz. And so in our previous example, we were in training to six hertz, which is, if done long enough, we'll put our brain into a theta prominent brainwave state, meaning we're more relaxed. So it's been shown that two, one to two weeks at bedtime with a headphone, you can improve your sleep with binaural beats. There are some free resources on YouTube, for instance, where there are music plus binaural beats. So it gives a more pleasurable experience, thanks to having the music. Let me know in the comments if you want to go deeper into binaural beats. I have a good colleague who explores binaural beats for sleep and well-being. Now to finish off, I'd like to talk about neural entrainment. This is the brain's capacity to synchronize its brain waves to external rhythms. And although sofagio tones have not yet been proven to induce these effects, there have been some particular frequencies that have driven a lot of scientific research because of its potential to heal or improve Alzheimer's disease. This is 40 hertz. So in mice with Alzheimer's, 
pulsating light and sound at 40 hertz reduced the proteins associated with Alzheimer's, which are called the amyloid and tau proteins, preserved the neurons and improved memory in these mice. There's a clinical trial with humans at the moment providing daily 40 hertz light and sound rhythm. And it's been shown to slow down brain shrinking, brain atrophy, improving cognition compared to controls. Phase three trials are ongoing. So 40 hertz entrainment is, has actually serious research, clinical research. If you want me to focus more on the research about 40 hertz, gamma stimulation as it's called, let me know in the comments. So here's what you should do based on current evidence. If you like 432 hertz music, use it. Because musical preference is one of the most important aspects for musical pleasure and the therapeutic and well-being effects of music. It will help you reduce stress if you enjoy it. For sleeping or reducing anxiety, use binaural beats or slow music that you love. For deep relaxation, sound baths have been shown to have some benefits, but slow music as well. Do subscribe because I can talk about my PhD research, which is sleep music, and looking at the neurobiology and psychological effects on sleep quality. So I know about relaxing music. Let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about this. So the sulfur tones is a recent history and there are some evidence for 432 hertz but it's still quite new and relatively unproven. There is already a lot of science for different types of music and sound that is beneficial for health and well-being like singing bowls, binaural beats, the research in music therapy that help people relax and get another attentional focus. There is no one magical number. It comes to how sound shapes our attention and emotional states. Make sure to subscribe and comment for what you'd like the next deep dive to be about. Is it about harmonies and chords for relaxation, binaural sleep protocols, or 40 hertz gamma and the brain? See you soon. Does 432 hertz really uh, 